All right, guys, welcome back to Broke Bets. This is week nine of the NFL, or sorry, week 10 of the NFL. We're reviewing week nine, and uh, you had you went uh, lights out. You got everything right this week. Yes, I did. And, uh, yeah, so I, I do, a you know, the Action Network app, and I got, uh, I think I went nine and three on the Sunday games or something, just for spreads and over-unders for each game picks. So I did pretty damn good myself just with that stuff. Um, but, yeah, 4.45 units, our biggest winning week yet. Um, starting off, I picked the Vikings' money line. I didn't trust their spread, and that proved right. Uh because it was set at three and a half and they won by three and uh yeah they pulled out a sloppy ass game still uh next one i had i had the lions beating the packers by one to 13 the packers just have no momentum no energy uh lions are dog mentality and are way better in that mentality than the packers are uh they historically play them well yeah easy money especially when they're at home um I wouldn't say easy money. I mean, Rodgers did throw three picks, so it did come out all right. But uh, then you had the Falcons here. Yep, uh, about the half a point, just in case they lost by three, and they lost by three. So perfect. Uh, next, I had Panthers at Bengals. I knew the Bengals were going to score points. I mean, if they ever face a team with a great D line, they seem to struggle put any points on the board. They they had decent pass protection and Joe Mixon had a lot of touchdowns so that one was really easy, and then your Bears play. Yeah, this was the easiest play of the day. I mean, the Bears are like putting up thirty points a game. I expect the Dolphins to put up that much against the Bears depleted D. And so. and with how Fields is running on third down, they're not punting like they were earlier in the season, so they can extend drives. Right. Uh, parlays. I had the Bills beating the Jets. It, Josh Allen had some not so great moments in that game, and uh, the Jets pulled out the the W. But I don't have any really regrets about that one. Then Patriots plus three and a half. I didn't think the Colts would win anyway, but it was a slight cover for a parlay. Lost that one, and then you polished it off with your parlay. Yep, uh, under forty seven and a half for the Rams and Buccaneers. Uh, I think they went under their original line as well. And the Lions also covered their original line as well, which was at like plus three and a half, I believe. Yeah, that was, um, that was nice. Bought a couple couple points to be safe, and they hit. Right on. Uh, I'll pull up the stat sheet. So now we're at 8.44, uh, winning for NFL, 12% ROI. Here's some stats week by week, some of our biggest winning sections to share. And, uh, yeah, let's get into the uh, actual bets now, uh, the next week of picks. Um, so first game, we got the Falcons at the Panthers. Um, Falcons coming off a pretty good game here uh, against the, was it Chargers? Sorry. Yeah, they lost by three. Uh Still st- kept in themselves in the game. Um, I'm, we're picking the Falcons minus two and a half. They just play the spread really well this year. Um, I will be putting a one unit bet on the sheet for this. Um, they've covered it well. I mean, but uh, like you said to me before, uh, this is a game that they played two weeks ago, and they're coming back into it here. Well, it could be a close matchup. Yeah. Um, game a couple weeks ago uh, was the game where. DJ Moore took his helmet off. He scored a uh, final touchdown. Um, could have won, taken that extra point, but they pushed it back because of the penalty. Um, don't know if Baker Mayfield will be quarterback here. I believe he finished out the game last week. So I like uh, Cordell Patterson out back healthy, though. I don't think he was in that original game two weeks ago, so that's an added uh, component for the Falcons. So, uh, yeah, I think t- his line was set at like 51 or somewhere around there, 51 and a half. Right. For his rushing yards. Okay. Uh, next one, uh, next game, we have the Seahawks at the Buccaneers. I'll let you talk about this one to start. Yeah, this game's in Munich, Germany, so early start time for the Americans here, 8.30 Central Time. Uh, I think 
both these teams, I guess the Buccaneers got some momentum beating the Rams last week. I don't th they didn't score a touchdown until the final one there in the last minute. Um, I think the Seahawks are playing really well. And they beat the Cardinals last week by by 10, which was impressive. So I'll still ride with them. They're the underdogs here at uh, plus three. Uh, I'm I'm gonna circle this under 44 and a half. This has been my money maker all year. Um, and like you said, with this game being across the 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 world here in Germany, um, I think that you know the effects of just that time change and uh, playing football in a different atmosphere. Maybe it's a little bit quieter and they do play offense better. But uh, under 44 and a half, the Bucks haven't scored 40 over 40 points. I don't think in however many games, so I like that number. Um, probably, I will be... Put, put up 31 last week. 31 total, yeah. I feel like uh, I'm going to bet that one as well, so keep that one marked, because I know we can't get them all to you guys in great time. Um, next one. Uh, the Lions at the Bears. Um, Lions, like we said, just beating the Packers and kind of... Uh, Weird shootout, but it was still entertaining in a way. It's always fun to watch the Packers lose. And uh, Bears staying in a close game with the Dolphins. I heard there's some bad refing calls in that. I don't really know the exact context. I didn't watch it. Absolutely. Um, but with the like we said, with with uh, Justin Fields running well on third down, it's continuing Bears drives and the Lions of a horrible run D. Um, I like the uh, over 48 and a half here just to keep scoring. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I um, think the Lions will put up around 20, 25, low tw or mid to high 20s. So I think the Bears will probably put up around 30. They've been averaging 30 over the past couple of weeks. So I think that over should be a good look there. Right. And uh, I don't think it's hard for the Lions to score on the Packers secondary. They seem to play Jared Goff's passing pretty well. So this is a better chance for, for them to get back in their scoring ways. Uh, next game, we have Browns at the Dolphins. Um, I'll let you go with this one now. Uh, Dolphins riding some momentum, beating the Bears last week. Um, coming back home. Minus three and a half favorites, I believe. Did the Browns play last week? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think that, yeah, they're coming off their bye, so maybe a little reset for them. Um, I think the Dolphins just have a ton of momentum with Tua and the offense, so I'll probably buy a half a point to make that minus three. Uh, yeah, well, uh, We'll pick that. We'll pick that number. Uh, a lot of unknowns with this team. The Browns seem to show up and play pretty well with their run game occasionally, but if they get shut down on offense, it can get really sloppy. So, yeah, Dolphins minus three and a half is probably the spot there. Uh, next one, uh, Vikings at the Bills. A lot of question marks on this team. Whether Josh Allen will play. I mean, as a Vikings fan, I want Josh Allen to play because I want the Vikings to prove they can beat a good team. Otherwise, I Still, I'm really questionable about their record and what they can do here. Um, hard to circle anything on this game, but the Vikings will play to the level of their opponent, or they'll get shut down by the Bills' defense for a little bit. Um, so the under 43.5 looks like the right number for me, as if now. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is really a toss-up just based on if Josh Allen plays or not, so I'm not going to have a say here. Right, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, next one, get the Jags at the Chiefs. Um, I'm picking the Chiefs minus 9.5. They can store quick. Uh, it's not to say the Jags can't put points on the board, but uh, a little bit more inconsistent of a quarterback. Uh, won't, won't be seeing a bet from me, though, on this game. Yeah, I'd probably stay away from this game as well, just at minus nine and a half. Um, Jags came back last week against the, the Raiders, which was impressive. I think that's the third blown 17-point lead. lead for the Raiders. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a tough game to call. Maybe the over, 
but probably not. Maybe. I mean, I yeah, lean, the Titans. I lean more towards the Chiefs. Uh, we got that uh, Titans pick right last week, but we didn't play the plus 12 and a half. But uh, uh, it kind of depends if the Chiefs show up and stay consistent on offense. Yeah, I mean, just the Titans couldn't throw the ball at the, at the entire game, which was a little frustrating to watch. Right. Uh, next one, we have the Texans, the Giants. Uh, I don't know. I, I still have a weird feelings towards the Giants. I don't know how to examine their games fully. They keep games real close and uh, seem to win by three points or like lose by three is kind of that number. What are your thoughts? Yeah, they play pretty much every team really closely. Um, like they, I think in the past couple, their past couple of wins, they've been down by like a touchdown or so in the fourth quarter and come back and win. So they play the entire game. I could see them winning by three here. I don't really love the the four and a half points, but I mean maybe the under. I think their games are really relatively low scoring. Yeah, their I defense is the, playing well. Yeah, their defense plays really well, and I don't think Mills will put up that many points, especially on the. Yeah. Uh, next one, we got the Broncos at the Titans. Um, Broncos, uh, still not in full rhythm. Uh, and Titans without their quarterback is what the line says. What the the over under set at 37, which is an insane, might be one of the lowest numbers I've seen this year. 38 is usually one of the lowest ones you see, but um, hard to pick an exact spot for this game. And I don't have a pick as if right now, do you have anything for this? Uh, no, I think this kind of depends on if Ryan Tannehill plays or not. As um, if he was a game, he was a game time decision last week. So I don't, I don't know what, um, what his status will be this week. Right. Uh, uh, as if right now yeah. I'm going to pick the Denver just money line for value, but, um, you know, I'd, you probably won't see a bet from me on this either. Yeah. Uh, next, Saints at the Steelers. Saints have some really questionable offensive decisions for me. Sometimes question what Andy Dalton and their scheme is. Um but they're playing the Steelers, who have little to no offense. Um, I gotta pick the Saints here at minus one and a half. I think they have an ability to force a turnover here or there, um, maybe strip Kenny Pickett, and uh, yeah, get that win. Yeah, I like the Saints as well. Um, bouncing back after the the Ravens' loss, um, they're on a short week too, playing from. Monday to Sunday, while the Steelers are coming off their bye week. Something to look at. Uh, I don't think that'll play too much into effect, but I do like the, the Saints to win this one. Yep. Uh, next, get the Colts at the Raiders. Um, two teams who really can't get it going in either way. I mean, that new quarterback, Sam Ellinger, not much success. Um, the Raiders are just on and off, like you said, they blew a 20-point lead or a 17-point lead or whatever at halftime. Um, as if right now, all I really could say is maybe the Raiders' money line for this, but like, at what cost would you use that value? And and I don't see a, really a great spot here. Um, possibly mm-hmm. an alternate under for an option for a parlay, but that's it. Yeah, I, I don't like anything here either. Just Sam Ellinger has not looked great. They're getting Jeff Saturday as their coach. He hasn't coached um, college or professional. So, And when he was with some high school team in 2020, they were like 3-8. and eight, So not sure what you're going to get with him. Um, and like you said, the Raiders just haven't played an entire game. So. Yep. I don't know if they can hold the lead. They should be able to. The run game is good. Uh, but... Next one, we got the Cowboys at the Packers. Um, got to take, take the Cowboys minus five. They got that fast defense. Um, I don't see their run game just going for tons of yards, but they'll probably be pretty neutralized, get like three and a half, four yards of carry. Um, 
and I see the Packers trying to hit him with deep balls on some of their more um, aggressive corners. You could say like Trayvon Diggs who try to get those interceptions. But uh, it's going to be a pretty hard for their offense to out, outdo this defense. And on the other side, Tony Pollard would probably run all over him. So minus five Cowboys. Yeah, I like that as well. They're the they're uh, the way team here as well. Um, this would be Mike McCarthy returning to to Lambeau Field. I don't know if that's the first time he's returning, but I don't think so. Something but... to look forward to for him. I think uh, his team will will back him up and play hard for him. So I like them to win by six or more here. Eat it, Lefleur. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next we got Cardinals at the Rams. Um, Cardinals still, man, there's just so many questionable teams this year, and especially like just Kyler Murray at quarterback is just hit or miss. And uh, with the Rams' offensive line, like I've talked about already before, and how ugly moments are of that Buccaneers game and unwatchable moments are, um, I got to go with the Rams minus one and a half, but there isn't much to this game as well. Yeah, divisional game here. Um, they tend to be close divisional games because they see see each other twice twice a year. Um, Cardinals, like you said, have looked horrible. Um, new Call of Duty has been up for a couple weeks. Maybe <laughs> Kyler Murray will will put the game down. And probably get sick of it by now. But yeah, I think Rams at home. I think you got to go with them uh, minus one and a half. <clears throat> yep. Um, next one, we got the Chargers at the 49ers. Um, Chargers defense, for what it looks like on paper, doesn't really perform to that level. Um, and 49ers, uh, with McCaffrey, slant routes from Jimmy G, should be able to put up some like, points in my eyes. And uh, um, on the other side, I think Herbert could throw the ball, possibly get strip-sacked by... Bosa, which should lead to quick scores and a lot more throwing in the game. Um, I'm looking at the over 45 and a half. Yeah, I like that here as well. I think uh, McCaffrey's a huge addition to their offense. You saw saw their game against the Chiefs uh, two weeks ago. Uh, they put up quite a few numbers. I can't tell you the exact numbers, but it was high. Uh, maybe it's the Rams. I think that's what I'm thinking of. They put up like 31 points against the Rams a yeah. couple weeks ago. Um, yeah, I just think McCaffrey is a huge addition to their offense. He can play pretty much everywhere. And Eckler's, and think, Eckler's oh, like the yeah. same way on the other side. So Yeah, I think both these teams can put up some points. Um, and then to polish it off, we got the Commanders at the Eagles. Um, should be an easy blowout for the Eagles. Uh, same mindset that I'm thinking when I talked about the Bills Jets game last week, even though it didn't even play out the way I described it. I think that one team's gonna get ahead and uh, one team's gonna play from behind and we're gonna see the Eagles run up the clock probably in early in the second half, so under forty four is my number. Yeah, I mean it's they're tough to tough to decide here with the huge spreads. Commanders I don't know for how bad they are, they seem to Stay in games. <laughs> really weird. I mean, against the Vikings, Taylor Heineke threw a 40-yard interception pass that the ref blocked a, a safety on that was going to get intercepted, which led to a touchdown. So, like, seven of those points hardly even count in their favor. And I think it's been really hard for Heineke in a, a broke-down pocket and a, a good defense he's playing here. So Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. You like the under, probably the Eagles will put up tw- around 28 points and then probably don't see the Commanders putting up 14 or more. Probably not. And the spread's just kind of a high now. I, I just can't stand playing spreads that are around 10 points. It's yeah, too much. I stay away from all those. Well, these are all of the picks. Like we always say, guys, in these videos, uh, these bets will be vo- posted uh, early Sunday morning, I guess since... There's a Thursday night game, obviously, and there's the 8 a.m. game. I'll tell you, I am betting the Falcons minus 2.5 and, and the Buccaneers under 44 just straight up. Um, so if you want to get those tail those, go ahead. 
Um, we got a UFC betting video coming out tomorrow uh, afternoon, so pay attention for that because uh, a lot of odds, probably a lot of odd swings with round betting in UFC. And uh, anything else from you? I covered it all. Right Peace. on. Peace.